Welcome back to Legends of South Bend. Not so pretty today. I'm here with Luther Bradley, who is Notre Dame's all-time leading interceptor with 17. One of the handful of guys that played on actually two national championships. Luther, we just watched this game. We're in Ann Arbor. We talk about the rivalry. We knew that it was going to be kind of a rebuilding year. What did you see going on out there on the field, and what does Notre Dame need? What, what, what's going on? Well, you know what? There's a lot of things, man. You know, we have a lot of inexperience. Um, we don't have a lot of fight in our play. Um, we don't have technique in, in crucial situations, particularly in the defensive backs. Um, it was hard to find anything positive about it. But if we want to look at this thing positively, you know, they've got to be, this has got to be a character building situation for them. And so this whole year, they got to figure out who can really play, who can't play, what do they need. So next year, they'll be better prepared. Yeah, and I hear that. I mean, that's one of the things I've really noticed is kind of lacking out there. Some oomph. I don't see guys flying around to the ball and trying to punish people and put a hurt on them. It just kind of seems like they're taking whatever the other team's going to give them. What, what can they do to correct that? Is that something that is correctable? Well, you know, it first starts from the head coach, and he's got to be able to motivate these guys to want to hit and uh, who want to uh, who want to play and not lose. And um, I remember us playing, and we always said, you can't let a team walk down the field 60, 70, 80 yards. And um, if you stop them, you know, at least you give yourself an opportunity. But they're not even doing that. And, so, and, if, you, and if they do, get mad about it. They're not even mad about it. So um, there's a lot of things that they've got to fix, but it's going to have to start with old Charlie, and Charlie's got to make a difference. Yeah, and then to their, uh, to their defense a little bit, to the defense, the offense kind of didn't put them in very good situations, man. The rushing game is atrocious. They're not protecting the quarterback. doesn't matter who's back there, what they're doing. Notre Dame is as worse as I've ever seen them. Is there anything that they can do this year to turn this around? Well, you know what? Again, it starts with defense. Well, you know, I, I don't know. It's a lot of places. But to me, the first thing is is that it seems like the other teams are playing on the short field. They're playing going 50 yards, and we've got to go 75, 80 yards. And we don't have a team good enough to go 30 yards. So we're putting ourselves in a bind. And so um, I think if we play better defense, at least we're giving ourselves a chance, number one. Then number two, we can't start. We've got to get away, though, get away from making mistakes, you know, interceptions, fumbles. Um, giving them 15-yard penalties on crucial third-down situations. Those are mental errors. Yeah, and you heard that. For There were a lot of mental errors out there. A lot of people were talking about Charlie Weiss not open that offense. They did that today. We saw that there were some problems. We had some offensive linemen go down. Notre Dame is in trouble. They can turn this thing around. It's going to take a lot of time. It's going to have to take some heart and getting back to basics. Simplify things. Get it to be nuts and bolts. Hat on the hat. Start with fundamentals. Get this thing turned around. Any bright spots that you saw out of Notre Dame at all out there today? The punting. You know, I thought the punting was good. <laughs> and always, at least they backed them up quite a bit. But, uh, yeah, that's the only bright spot I saw. And uh, last night I had a chance to meet Jeff for the first time. And uh, he was a delightful guy, fifth-year senior. And uh, he showed a little bit of character last night as well. So, yeah, the punting is the only bright spot I saw. <laughs> <laughs> and the punting just have been getting a lot of uh, work out there. Yeah. Now, talk about that as a defensive player. There are a lot of defensive players on Notre Dame's punt team. You see that show up later on in the game. Guys start to get tired. They're on the field a lot because the offense isn't helping them. Talk about the trickle-down effect as a defensive player if you're having to cover kicks all day and how that shows up in the fourth quarter. Well, the main thing is that, you know, you get tired after being out there and you stand out there for 20 and 30 plays. And I bet you once they break the film down, the offense might have 35 plays the whole game. The defense has probably got 95. So over time, that's going to wear you down. And those guys beating you down with running these backs, play after play after play. And then you get out there and you try to, you know, run down on a kickoff 10 times. You run down on a punt eight times. And, you know, after a while you say, man, how can I do this? So we got a lot of work to do everywhere on this football field. Yes, we do. And I wish we had some more players like Luther Bradley because if we had them, we wouldn't have the result that we had out there today. Stay tuned for later on in the week when we'll get Luther's tips and techniques on why he was such a good DB and also hear his keys to victory, hopefully, over Michigan State.